This is a five minute review of converting units, and I'm Fred Oaks. To convert a unit, like say meters to inches, we'll have to do three things. First, we have to find the conversion path, the path of units along which we have to travel to get from say meters to inches. There might be intervening units there. The second step is to look up those unit conversion numbers. For example, you might know how many inches in a foot, but do you know how many tablespoons in a gallon? Do you know how many quarts in a liter? You usually have to look those up using some resource, which we'll talk about in a moment. And then we calculate it. For this video, we'll be using Fred's famous fudge factor. The idea of this conversion method is to have you pay attention to the units and allow the units to tell you, do you multiply, do you divide, how do you convert from one to the other. It's a good method and I urge you to give it a try. First, find the conversion path. We'll use the example how many inches in 1.2 meters. We start with meters, but where do we go from there? Now you may know how to get from meters to centimeters, and then you can find on a conversion chart how many centimeters in an inch. So that's the path we'll be traveling, meters to centimeters to inches. Now for the second step, we look up those unit conversions. Now this is something where we're going to have to look it up on some resource, either a chart, a table, the back of the book, online, something that'll tell us how many of one thing is in another thing. For example, in one meter is 100 centimeters, and maybe you already know that. And in one inch is 2.54 centimeters. These two unit conversions allow us to travel the path from meters to centimeters to inches. We're now ready for Fred's famous fudge factor. That's a calculation method in which we're paying attention to units. To get started, we'll draw a grid like this, and we'll put the number that we start with, in this case 1.2 meters, in the upper left corner. It's really crucial that you write down the unit as well as the number, because the unit is going to tell you how to cancel out the next thing. So we've got meters on the top. How do we get rid of meters? Putting meters on the bottom of the next bay. That cancels out the meter, and the meter goes away, which is exactly what we want. We want to convert to the next thing, which in this case is centimeters. So meters to centimeters. Centimeters is now on top, and meters has been canceled out. But we don't want to end with centimeters. We want to end with inches, so we want to cancel out centimeters. So we'll put centimeters on the bottom. Since we're going from centimeters to inches, inches goes on the top. Okay, now here's the power of the fudge factor. To see how the units cancel out and the only thing left is inches. Meters on the top and the bottom, centimeters on the top and the bottom, all of those cancel out, and inches are left. Great, now we've set up the units, let's put in the numbers. 100 centimeters and one meter and one inch and 2.54 centimeters. We've now set up the calculation. Let's talk now about how to do this. Everything on the top is multiplied by, and everything in the bottom is divided by, okay? Just like in algebra. You don't have to use your equal sign until the end of this calculation. You simply put in 1.2 times 100 times one, divided by one, divided by 2.54, and hit the equal sign. Once you've hit the equal sign, you'll get the value of 47.244 and so on. And now we get to the last piece of this problem. As with all problems, we want to round appropriately. We want to use the right number of significant digits. So let's look around to see what numbers we've been using to get the right number of significant digits in the end. First, let's look at the data. There are two significant figures in 1.2. How about the other numbers we've used? We've used a 100, a 1, a 2.54, but all of these numbers are unit conversions and are exact. Put a different way, there's no uncertainty in how many centimeters in a meter. There are exactly 100. There's no uncertainty about how many centimeters in an inch. There's exactly 2.54. These have been defined for us. So we don't have to use them for significant figures. Put more simply, the data determines how many significant figures, not the unit conversions. Since the data have two sig figs, the end number can have two sig figs. And so rounding 47.244 and so on inches into two sig figs gets us 47 inches. Okay, so let's just quickly review what we've covered. To get a unit conversion problem to work, first to determine the path of the unit conversion, we've gone from meters to centimeters to inches. Then look up those unit conversion numbers. One meter has 100 centimeters, one inch has 2.54 centimeters and then do Fred's famous fudge factor, in which we keep track of the units, canceling them out until eventually we end with the unit we need. Then calculate it and come up with an answer.